owns the water uh, in the valley? There's no greater source than the U.S. Supreme Court. The water is held in trust by the Imperial Irrigation District, pertinent to the land. And I might add to that for improvement to the land. That's what the water code says. QSA obviously been a big issue, uh, well, for years, but especially recently it's been in the news. Um, do you support the QSA in its current form? Do you think it should be changed? How do you, how do you see that? Well, I think anyone that tells you that they support it in its current form probably hasn't read it. Okay. okay? I, don't, I don't believe contractually or legally it can stand as currently written. Okay. There are portions of it that's going to uh, require negotiations to get it back on track. If the QSA were ultimately overturned and the IID lost that revenue that um, was coming in, how does the IID uh, ensure that it conserves enough water to keep itself within its uh, yearly allocation? I mean, I think now you're under the allotment, correct? Um, That's correct. You guys, do you think you have uh, good plans in place um, to make sure water conservation is, is top of mind? Well, you know, if it's if it's not validated, um, I'm not quite sure what the result legally will be. I would think it would return our allocation back, our entitlement off the river back to where it was before. But we all we all know that times are changing, and conservation is is going to be critical. It's going to be a must. And plus, with the additional growth of the industry. Um, we brought forward, and I'm happy to say I suggest that uh, the Integrated Water Resource Plan, which would uh, provide uh, sufficient water for all users. Okay. It may require some augmentation of our existing entitlement, mm -hmm. but in, in most circumstances it would not. And uh, you kind of brought up uh, water usages. Um, how do you, how do, you, do you see uh, a good balance for agriculture versus the green energy firms and things uh, with water usage? Well, you know, it's, it's really difficult um, to take water from some entity that's had a history of using it uh, without some type of compensation uh, as long as the, their use of the water has been reasonable beneficial use. If you can conserve water and you can mitigate those issues, uh, you can make the transfer. Um, or it, it, in our case here, we have a lot of uh, water that could be recycled. But the issue of the salt and sea is always the albatross around our neck. How are we going to handle that? We have 900,000 acre feet of, of uh, runoff water. A lot of people think that's unreasonable use, but they don't know the, the circumstances of the salt in that water. But we can reclaim that for about the third of the cost of ocean water, which would make sufficient water for any type of growth that we would need, but then you have to mitigate the sea. And that's why it's so critical that we hold the state responsible to step up to the plate and mitigate the sea. We have not made a commitment of, of any amount of water to it because somewhere down the line, we're going to need that water for our own growth here in Imperial Valley. You know, there was some talk, especially uh, a year or two ago, about splitting off water and power, maybe selling off some uh, of the energy concerns uh, north of us here. Uh, how do you feel about that? Should they be separated? Should things stay the way they are? Well, well again, Brad, I, I think when people go that route, they don't really understand and, uh, and I'd like to get back to that about the fiduciary responsibility of the board. But they don't really understand. We're an irrigation district and we can only be in the power business because we are an irrigation district. If you break it off separate, then some other entity has to own it. The Imperial Irrigation District wouldn't be able to own it because they're, they're no longer tied to the water. And that's the only way that we can keep the two together because uh, of the, the water code. If it was separated off, we would eventually be owned by an investor-owned utility and you can bet that our rates would, would match that on the coast and the, and the large city. And even though we have high electric bills, it's because of the nature of, of our climate. Uh, we have the cheapest power in Southern California. 
but we also have the hottest weather. But uh, you let an investor own utility come in here uh, where they're entitled to profit uh, and speculation, uh, it would be a tough, tough go for the ratepayers of Imperial County. Right. I do not support splitting them off. Okay, all right, thank you. You've kind of been through the, the cycle of having a general manager, not having a general manager, uh, and now you have uh, Brian Brady, he's been here for a while. Um, how do you feel about the job that he has done? What do you think he's brought to the district? Brian has, has done a good job on, on, the, on the far side. We, we had an issue, we were upside down financially. I was very concerned whether we were going to be able to keep the institution afloat. He came in and recognized what our concerns were, uh, dealt with them. We've turned the financial uh, side of the, uh, the energy side, financially, we've turned it around. Uh, Matter of fact, we're building up some reserves. We still have some uh, water issues, and it's all pretty much tied to the QSA and some old uh, system improvements that at some point in time, we have to prepare some type of funding mechanism to, to handle those issues. Okay. Um, I do have one beef with him. I expected him to move here. That was whenever we were interviewing that was the understanding, and that was a position that all of us took as a board, uh, that we would require the general manager to live here. Okay. So, uh, you know, um, with the, the progress that he's made, I think he could uh, even do better. You know, you have a record now, you have some history with, uh, with the IAB board and you're going out and talking to people about that to get reelected. What, what would you say to people um, when you talk to them about being reelected? Why should people vote for you? Um, what have you brought? What will you continue to bring? Well, the, the first thing, you know, I, I came in right in the middle of the gas hedging. And if you remember, I met with you. I saw a big delta, and that was a, the first time it really became public. Uh, I didn't know what was causing that delta and was having a hard time getting the information. Um, so we've turned that around. Last year there was a surplus. Not only have we paid back the, the reserves that we pulled down, not only have we bought fuel out and, and have planning for the next two years, but we also have uh, collected an additional 83 million, which kind of creates a problem in itself because it is in the ECA. It needs to be placed into a rate stabilization fund or uh, we need to uh, lower the rates and return that money back to the ratepayers through that process. We do have some issues. There's, the ECA has been manipulated over the years for a number of years, going clear back to probably 2000, where whenever the ECA would start to increase, uh, some of the cost would be shipped over to the base rate. So the base is really underfunded. And we are looking at, uh, we're seeing this surplus as an opportunity now to make uh, permanent adjustments to the rate structure so that the base rate and our infrastructure is properly funded and that the uh, rate pier is uh, charged the correct amount in the ECA.